So your website. So muzzle training for this situation is really helpful. It's just a really nice safeguard to make sure that that bite history doesn't stack up. So how far can I get with this training in two weeks? Five years ago, my dog, Dimma, attacked another dog. It was serious. The vet needed to do 27 stitches to close all the wounds on the other dog. Dimma walked away without a scratch. I got Dimma from a lovely home when she was 8 weeks old. I lived in England at the time, where I worked as a vet and studied dog training. I read the international bestseller Perfect Puppy several times and followed every single advice regarding socialization and training. As a matter of fact, I even got advice directly from the author herself, Gwen Bailey, since she was my teacher at the time. Over the years, I've also read countless other books on dog training and behavior. So what went wrong? Why don't I have the perfect dog? 
Hi. I'm <laughs> good. And you? Okay. It's lighter. Well, yeah, as you know, I've got I've had some problems with Dima. I bought this puppy and she was gonna be the perfect puppy. <laughs> what happened? So slightly what you did wrong, if you did anything wrong at all, was you didn't buy a perfect puppy in the first place. Mm. And as hard as that is to say that, that might be the case. You know, mm. it might be genetic. A border terrace, particularly in England, there's two sets of dogs. Some are absolutely robust as anything, and they're lovely, absolutely lovely. You can do anything to them and they don't worry. Um, and the others are very fearful, scared, and a bit aggressive. I found it's easier to have the muzzle basket side up on the ground, um, and then you put the treats down in the middle, and then fold them together. Okay. Good. She's looking very comfortable with this, yeah. which is wonderful. Since she's good with that, then we can actually go to bubbling. This is fabulous. Mm -hmm. yeah. What we would look for, but I haven't seen any of that really so far, which is great. Um, if she were to flinch, or some dogs will, once they feel the straps going up, they'll start to, to back their head out. Um, that's an indicator that eh, they're not quite comfortable. Mm -hmm. But she seems completely fine with the straps going over. Oh! Did she put that on herself? It looks a bit big. It does, doesn't it? She has one of those difficult to fit snouts, I suppose. Does she do palm targeting? Yeah. Yeah. So this can be a good way to get them used to moving their head to the sides and up and down. We work up to having her move. I got a smaller one. Okay. Does it fit better? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Does she like doing things like spin? Anything that gets her moving? Um, Keeps her occupied and doing something other than thinking about how oh, this muscle is kind of awkward. I'm gonna paw it off. Okay. I have a difficult time accepting that I have to walk my dog with a muscle on. I, I, you know, it, it's just because I don't want people thinking my dog is horrible and dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, I'll leave for a Hvad tænker du som det første, når du ser sådan en uh, hund med mundkur på? Det ser lidt, sådan, lidt farligt ud, ved det ikke. Okay. Uh, jeg er meget stor modstand af, at, at hunden får mundkur på, medmindre de er ude af kontrol fuldstændig. Det er synd for den. Jamen altså, jeg kan da godt se, at nogle hunde kan være farlige at angribe, men jeg synes stadigvæk, det er hum altså, inhumant at, have, at give en hund det på. Altså, så skal man jo som ejer til ansvar for at oplære hunden ordentligt, så den ikke angriber. Jeg tænker, der må være en grund til, at den har den på. Har den bit? Øh, ja. ja. Mm. Og hvad tænker du så, hvis jeg fortæller dig, at ejeren er en hundetræner? Øh, at så skal ejeren ikke have hund? Ja, det er det, du <laughs> Okay. Han har fandme at vide, hvad han er gang i, eller så... Ja. Så skulle han ikke være min kammerat i hvert fald. Hunden eller ejeren? Ejeren. Ejeren. Det må jeg sige. Ég ætla að tala við um, Marín á Skype í kvöld um hvernig gengi með þjálfunna en hún þurfti að fresta í þangu til á morgun mm, Það 
er bara tveir dagar eftir. Og mér finnst ég kannski ekki alveg búin að ná í að blanda eins og ég hefði vonað. Það gekk alveg rúslega vel fyrstu dagana. En svo finnst mér einhvern veginn eins og við sér nokkuð hvernig föst. Stimma ekki vera ekki finnst þetta nóg þægilegt að vera með múlinn svona sætt sér við það því að hún fæði nammi en það er til að mér svo margt sem við getum ekki gert til þannig leikið við erum ekki að hún er að reyna að láta hana vita í leikvangi sitt og það er hvernig mull það ekki og eða getur það ekki hún er fórt og þegar við erum úti að þá náttúrulega er upp á alls leikurinn að hoppa og bíta í spítu og getur það ekki um múlinn en ég veit ekki um að hvort hann getur við þér glöð um múlinn að sér There we go So how has it been going? Let's see, it's been Probably like a week and a half. Um, maybe we can start out with some of the trouble spots you've been experiencing and see if we can work through some of those. You know, um, I think we've gotten to the point where uh, Dima likes the muscle, but she's not really having any fun. So there's a couple different things. So this is, and this is the fun part, is helping her play games and do fun things with the muscle on. Most dogs are able to get small toys into the very front tips of their teeth. They can usually grab on a little bit, can't be with a stick, but kind of mimic that playful action with yeah. the muzzle. And another one is we can teach her almost a football type of game where she targets her nose onto a ball, yeah. and then you kick it back to her, and then she can kick it back to you. Um, okay. That can be a fun one. Yeah. Uh, as well as... It's true, I've been really focusing on her problems and why I'm not fixing it and why, you know, why can't we just go out for walks and meet other dog owners like, like we used to when she was a puppy and all yeah. of those things and... Uh, I think we should maybe stop dwelling on the negative because yeah. it's a small part, you I know. know. It probably wasn't your fault in the first place, mm. you know. Just went wrong, and mm. that's something else to it, you know. And and think of all the good things you've done with her, and how lovely she is mm. the rest of the time. Yeah, it's very important to think of that. Yeah. So what have I learned from these two weeks? Well, first of all, teaching Dima to happily wear a muscle was not as difficult as I thought it would be. And I've decided I don't care what people think of my dog, and I don't care what people think of my dog training skills. I'm not going to let people's prejudice prevent me from using a muscle on Dima. 
I've also accepted Dima for who she is. She doesn't need to like all dogs, just as I don't need to like all people. Nobody's perfect, but she's the perfect dog for my family.